Hello and welcome to the Good Imaginations podcast. Tonight, we will journey to the common room where you can unwind, reorient yourself, and if you would like, fall fast asleep. Before we begin our adventure, make sure you're settled. If you are seated, get comfortable. Listen to your spine and relax your shoulders. If you are lying down, get your covers and pillow where you want them. Create your nest. Very good. Now, take three deep breaths with me in preparation for the journey ahead. Let go of your day and travel to a vacation for your mind. Imagine with me. See, smell, and be present. Breathe with me now. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Slow and even. One. Two. Three. Very good. Now, shut your eyes and let's drift off to the site of tonight's adventure. It is a blustery night, howling. The wind and rain come down in sheets outside, and thunder regularly cracks. It's just wonderful to have a creepy storm. You think of all the pickled fish and things in their glass jars in the science wing downstairs, and you shudder. The castle will be so creepy tonight, all over. That makes it so much cozier here. You attend a wonderful school out in the country, the kind of school so interesting and adventurous and beautiful that when you got your acceptance letter, you jumped up and down on your bed and cheered. Well, you've been here for a few years now, but that still doesn't take away the rush of joy from attending school in an ancient castle with grounds like something out of a fantasy book. The castle itself is a wonderful thing to explore, but you don't feel like exploring tonight. Your wing of the dormitories has its own common room, and during the day and the early part of the evening, it is often filled with your fellow students doing homework. Tonight, however, it is perfectly empty. You think there is some sort of lecture or planned party or something silly downstairs. Most people are either up in their rooms or visiting chums or attending that lecture. It's a bit late at night to be doing homework, and by now, the common room is darkened from the storm with only the light of the fireplace glowing on the carpet. You have a party to go to yourself tonight. Since it's the start of the weekend, an informal gathering of card games and outrageous bluffing is going to take place in the room of a friend of yours. But it's still not for a bit. You're happy to go. But for right now, you are happier to be here. You wanted a space of your own to think. You found that you get too stressed and everything inside you gets snarled up if you don't take regular thinks. You have to feel what you're really feeling, instead of tricking yourself to think that you feel good all the time. You have to feel the nasty and get it out, that's what you always say. You're angry for a reason, why not respect your real feelings? So, as is your custom, you're taking the grumpiness and irritation and small sorrows of the day and feeling through them one at a time. Whenever you're done, you always feel lighter, like you've dumped buckets of water out of your heart. You never feel those moments haunt you anymore either, not once you've truly processed them. Once you pour them out, they really do seem to be gone for good. Soul mopping. That's what it is. (laughs) For your think tonight, you are pleased to have the common room all to yourself. There are plenty of soft chairs and a long couch, but you climb up into the window seat. Most window seats are near to the ground, but this one was built just under a tall window, so it takes a bit of athleticism to swing in. You get settled into the window seat, knees up, back, against the cool ancient stone of the castle. You fold your hands and look out the window. How absolutely wonderful. It is so lush and dark and cold out there, wet as an ocean. In here, it is dry, with soft carpet and the dry, crackling heat of the fire. 
You enjoy feeling the two extremes on either side of you. Dark and cold, light and dry. You sit in the middle, reigning between the two worlds, with your quiet contemplation on the window seat. You take a moment to listen to the quiet sounds of the room. It is such a quiet, rumbling night that this could be mistaken for silence. After all, no one is gabbing or complaining or playing music. But the night is playing music. The silence isn't silence at all. The longer you listen, the more sounds you hear, and they play against each other, like the notes in a song. There's a patter and drum of rain. Some of the drops are steady, a scattering sound, like sand being thrown. Others come in a wail of wind and splatter, like wind chimes against the glass of the window. Mixed in with the staccato beat of the rain, the wind calls. It purrs in the background, then wails softly, like a ghost climbing the ivy. Every once in a while, the wind rattles the window, and the metal of the window chatters, bounced back and forth by the gust. You also hear the crackle of the fire, the snap and pop of the logs, you shut your eyes and listen to all the sounds, the muttering wind, the crackling fire, the rush of the rain. Then thunder booms, and in the distance you hear an owl. You shiver. You peer out through the window into the night. It's as black as pepper, mottled dark and gray, and everything you see sops with storm water. You know the owl is roosted nearby sounding its call into the storm. Each time the owl hoots, you feel your arms tingle. On and on the owl talks, and the mystery of the night, and of the forest near the castle, well, all that magic and mystery get into your blood. You feel charged with adventure, with the strangeness of life. Strangeness is good, you think. You crave wildness sometimes, and the call of the owl is satisfying. You tilt your head back and place your forearms on your knees. You fold your fingers loosely and take three deep breaths. You slow down and engage with the silence and mystery around you. One. Two. Three. Thunder cracks again, the window rattles once more, and a spattering mist of rain hits you. You relish the iciness on your skin, like you have been sprayed by a blue whale, like the wildness out there has tossed you a bouquet of flowers to say hello. You press your fingertips to the glass of the window and stare out. The night is deep. Wild 